In this video, we'll take a look at the Heathkit IM36 transistor tester. I'll cover its features, how to operate it, show the circuitry inside, and demonstrate it being used. Heathkit was a manufacturer of electronics in kit form. Their product line included amateur radio, test equipment, and various consumer products. By building a piece of electronics, you could save money and gain the satisfaction of having assembled it yourself. Heathkit made a number of transistor testers over the years at different price points and levels of features. Some were simple go, no-go testers that indicated if the device was good or bad and maybe some indication of gain or leakage on a small meter. This included the models IT10, IT27, and IT3127. They were offered starting in 1961 with the IT10 at a price of $6.95. Also offered was a mid-range series of testers that could perform more measurements and offered a larger meter. These included the IT18 and IT3118, which sold for $25 to $35 when new. More sophisticated testers could measure gain and leakage more accurately. These started with the IM30 in 1961, which sold for $54.88, and which was restyled as the IM36 in 1967. In the 1960s, transistors were still new, relatively expensive, and less reliable than today. So a transistor tester made sense, just as a tube tester did earlier. Some early solid-state products even mounted the transistors in sockets. Over time, as transistors became more reliable and less expensive, a transistor tester became a rarely used piece of test equipment, although Heathkit offered models up until 1989. The IM36 transistor tester was offered from 1967 to 1974. It was sold in the U.S. for $60, equivalent to over $400 today. It was preceded by the IM30, which was electrically identical but had different styling in terms of case color, knobs, and meter. The IM36 was replaced by the IT121 in 1972, which could also test field effect transistors, SCRs, triax, and unijunction transistors. I've made a separate YouTube video on the IT121. The IM36 can perform basic DC analysis of NPN and PNP bipolar junction transistors, performing checks for shorts, leakage, and DC gain. It can measure DC gain, or beta, in two ranges from 0 to 200 and 200 to 400. It can also test diodes for forward and reverse current. It can test with collector voltages from 1.5 to 9 volts in 1.5 volt steps or with external voltages of 1.5, 5, 15, or 50 volts. Leakage tests can be performed from 1.5 to 9 volts or external voltages of 5, 15, 50, or 150 volts. Collector current can be measured with ranges of 0 to 150 microamps, 1.5 milliamps, 15 milliamps, 150 milliamps, 1.5 amps, and 15 amps. Leakage current supports meter ranges of 0 to 15 microamps, 150 microamps, 1.5 milliamps, 15 milliamps, 150 milliamps, and 1.5 amps. Four spring-loaded lever switches are moved up or down to select the operating mode. A large dial is marked with gain values in two ranges. Current and voltages are displayed on a zero center meter. It runs on seven D-cell batteries and is portable with a carrying handle. The batteries are accessible from a cover on the rear panel. The IM36 was offered as a kit. Test and calibration didn't require any test equipment. It was also available as the factory wired model IMW36. Let's take a look at the front panel controls. A two and a half inch meter reads current and voltage using the two scales depending on the range selected. A socket is provided for the transistor under test. Spring-loaded lever switches select the desired function. Collector voltage, leakage voltage, collector current, base current, short test current, or leakage of collector to emitter or diode test, or leakage from collector to base, or gain. The polarity switch selects between NPN and PNP transistor types, or diode forward or reverse current test. In the center off transit position, the batteries are disconnected and the meter is shorted to protect it from movement. The collector voltage switch selects 1.5 volt increments up to 9 volts or four external ranges up to 50 volts. 
the leak voltage switch selects 1.5 volt increments up to 9 volts or four external ranges up to 150 volts. The bias control adjusts collector current as shown on the meter when the collector current switch is pulled by varying the transistor's base current. The collector current control selects one of six meter ranges for measuring collector current from 150 microamps to 15 amps full scale. The leak current control selects one of six meter ranges for measuring leakage current from 15 microamps to 1.5 amps. The large gain control indicates the DC beta or gain value when adjusted for a zero on the meter. It has two ranges, 0 to 200 and 200 to 400, as selected on the adjacent gain low high switch. At the top left are jacks for connecting the transistor collector, emitter, and base leads, or two diode leads. Next are the jacks for external bias voltage, up to 5 volts, used when the switch is set for the external position. The remaining four jacks are for the external collector voltage power input, up to 50 volts, and the external leak voltage input, up to 150 volts. The rear panel can be opened to replace the 7D cells. The tester circuitry is quite simple with no active components, that is tubes or transistors. Most of the complexity is switching to accommodate the different tests performed. Collector and leakage test voltages are selected by using from 1 to 6 of the 1.5 volt batteries. The seventh battery is used only for bias voltage. The bias voltage is adjusted using a wire-wound potentiometer. The meter measures voltage using series dropping resistors for each range and measures current using shunts for each range. The meter movement itself reads plus or minus 10 microamps at full scale. Most of the resistors are 1% precision with unusual values. Two diodes across the meter provide some protection against an overload such as a shorted device. The switches configure the circuit to measure bias current collector voltage or current, and leakage voltage or current. The gain circuit is designed such that when the meter reads zero, the DC gain, the ratio of collector current to base current, can be read directly off the dial pointer. Taking a look inside, it uses all point-to-point -point wiring. Construction is simplified by using factory assembled wiring harnesses. While the manual says you can build, test, and use this instrument in a few hours, there would have been a significant amount of assembly work to assemble it. The resistors are mounted on rotary switches. Most of the resistors are 1% tolerance values. The meter shunt for the 15 amp range is a 0.01 ohm resistor made from this piece of wire. The meter is here with protection diodes across it. The gain and bias controls are wire wound potentiometers. There are two capacitors across the transistor socket and banana jacks, presumably to prevent possible oscillation of the transistor. The battery compartment is accessible from the back and supports seven D cells. Note that you can't connect a power supply in place of the batteries as it needs to tap into each of the individual 1.5 volt cells. The manual is up to Heathkit's usual high quality and level of detail. After assembly, it lists some basic initial tests and adjustments. If they pass, you just need to zero the meter and then make an adjustment to the gain control knob so that it reads zero for a zero base current. The manual describes how to test transistors and covers the theory of operation of the tester as well as a troubleshooting chart. The unit can perform some basic tests directly, while more sophisticated measurements can be made from calculations using multiple measurements. If you're testing a known type of device and want to check it against its published specifications, you can obtain the data sheet. Here's a portion of the data sheet for a 2N2222A transistor from ON Semiconductor. If you don't know the device type or have a data sheet, you can follow the generic instructions in the manual in the section called Testing Transistors with Unknown Ratings. Basic tests are usually performed as follows. Select NPN or PNP based on the transistor type. If not known, this can be determined during the testing. Set the desired collector voltage, collector current, and leak voltage. These can be based on the device's data sheet or the application of the devices intended to be used. Recommended values to use for unknown devices are given in the manual as collector voltage of 1.5 volts, collector current of 15 milliamps, and leak voltage of 9 volts. The bias control should be set fully counterclockwise. Insert the transistor into the socket or use the banana jacks and clip leads. Here I'm testing a 2N2222A NPN transistor. 
Press lever C down for the short test. A reading of four or more on the 15 scale is considered a short and no further testing should be done as it could damage the meter. Typically the reading will be zero and this transistor tests good for shorts. We can now test for ICEO, collector to emitter leakage. Raising lever D will perform the test. You can read the leakage off the meter taking into account the range selected on the leak switch. You may need to reduce the range to see a measurable value. For this 2N2222A, I read about 10 microamps on the lowest 15 microamp range. You can check the transistor data sheet for the maximum rated value. Lowering lever D will measure ICBO, collector to base leakage current. This is typically lower than ICEO and for this device is negligible. To measure gain, we first move lever B down to measure collector current and turn up the bias control until we get the desired collector current we want to use for the test. In this case, I'll use 10 milliamps, an arbitrary value. For NPN transistors, the meter will move to the left and for PNP will move to the right. If the meter doesn't move, you may have selected the wrong transistor type. Try changing the polarity switch to the other position and see if the collector current now changes with bias voltage. If not, then you likely have a bad transistor or have inserted the leads incorrectly. After setting the collector current to the desired 10 milliamps, we can measure the DC gain by lowering lever A and adjusting the gain control for a center zero value. If we can't zero the meter, as we can't here, then we may need to switch to the high gain range. When we change the gain switch, we need to adjust the collector current again. Then adjust the gain control for a zero on the meter with the gain lever selected. For this transistor, I measure a gain of about 210. The data sheet lists a minimum gain at 10 milliamps of 35. At 150 milliamps, it lists minimum gain of 100 and maximum of 300. So the measurement of 210 looks reasonable. Let's try another transistor, common 2N3904NPN. This shows no short and similar ICEO of about 10 microamps and negligible ICBO leakage. And measuring the gain, The gain at 10 milliamps is about 175. The data sheet lists a range of 100 to 300, so this looks reasonable. And now a 2N3906 PNP transistor. We switch the polarity to PNP. Short test is good. Leakage is about 14 microamps. Note that the meter deflects in the opposite direction. Gain is about 210, which is in line with the data sheet that lists from 100 to 300. As outlined in the manual, other AC parameters can be calculated from several DC measurements. For example, AC gain, defined as the change in collector current divided by the change in base current, can be calculated by making two measurements of collector current and base current by adjusting the bias control. Other parameters that can be calculated include DC and AC transconductance, DC and AC base resistance, and DC and AC collector resistance. 
Other leakage tests can be made by connecting shorting wires to the terminals. Diodes can be tested for forward and reverse current, and the tests can also use external bias, collector, or leakage voltages using the appropriate terminals and switch settings. As a point of comparison, this low-cost component tester, which I've covered in another YouTube video, can also identify transistors and measure DC gain. The values it reports are similar to what I measured on the IM36. I should mention a few other tips when using the tester. You can test transistors up to their maximum collector current. For this 2N2222A data sheet, this is 600 milliamps. Obviously, you can damage the transistor with too much collector current. The maximum ratings are typically valid only with a heat sink, and tests should only be applied for a short time. Power transistors can be tested up to the 20 amp current range, assuming the batteries are up to it. A diode forward current test requires adding an external series limiting resistor. You can calculate the value based on the desired test current. This is explained in the manual. For accurate readings, the base current switch setting should not be more than one range lower than the collector current switch setting. Remember to adjust the collector current if the gain range is changed. In some recent 2N2222A transistors, sometimes marked as PN2222A, have a reverse pinout from the usual devices. If you get strange results, this may be the problem. I bought this unit on eBay in June of 2017. In the eBay listing, it looked a little rusty. The seller had no information about its condition and it had no manual. It arrived in good condition and the rust or discoloring was not as bad as I feared and was limited to the outside. The inside was quite clean. It seemed to be complete and have all original parts. I gave it a thorough inspection, cleaned the case and used contact cleaner on the switches. Originally it would have included three leads with alligator clips which are now lost. Two of the four bottom feet are missing as well as feet on the back or they were never installed. I added a couple of adhesive feet. The screws holding the case together were not all of the correct size and some were in bad shape so I replaced them with new ones. It didn't come with a manual. I was able to find and obtain an original manual dated December 5th, 1969. It's in unusually pristine shape with all pages and no markings. I checked all of the wiring against the manual and I measured all resistor values and they were all pretty much within spec. One oddity was that the two protection diodes across the meter were missing. The manual says these are Heathkit part number 56-10, which depending on the source is referred to as a crystal diode or a silicon diode, but is listed as a type G247 varactor diode. The purpose of the diodes is to protect the meter by conducting if too high a voltage is applied to it. Looking around on the internet, some people had discussed a suitable replacement for this diode, and the consensus seemed to be that a silicon diode like a 1N4001 is suitable. A shot key clamping diode like a 1N5411 might be even better, but it's not critical. I wired in two 1N4001 diodes that I had on hand. I also noted that in the manual, under the theory of operation section, it says that the diodes across the meter will conduct around 6 volts. It should say 0.6 volts. The IM36 was sold for about 8 years until it was replaced by the IT121 which could test additional types of transistors that were then on the market like FETs and unijunctions. Today a new transistor costs a few cents and if you suspect it's bad you'd likely just replace it. However, as well as being of historical interest, a tester like the IM36 can still be useful today for understanding transistors and characterizing them, matching devices for leakage or gain, and testing unknown parts. It can also make sense to test rare or hard to replace transistors. For example, I have some Heath kits that use germanium transistors. Replacements are expensive, so I would want to test one before replacing it. If you're interested in vintage test equipment, you may want to purchase my book, Classic Heath Kit Electronic Test Equipment. The book covers Heath Kit's test equipment products, including transistor testers. The book is available from Lulu.com and Amazon and retails for US $19.95. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, please check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit radios and test equipment.